Okay, let's draw an otter. Uh, you can certainly draw with pencil, but I'm gonna draw it with Sharpie today. Uh, I will also be following along with this how to draw an otter guide. We're gonna start with the head. I like to make sure heads are not too small or too big, so I'm gonna use the hand to measure and then connect those two little dots with some rainbow curve lines to make an oval. If it's not a perfect oval, that is just fine. We're gonna go down and make the body next. The body should go almost all the way down to the bottom of the paper. Next, let's add on some arms. The arms are gonna curve across the body so we can have our otter holding on to something in a later step. Otters, when they're laying on the back, their little feet are kind of up onto their bellies, so we'll add those on top there. Let's add a few little details to the paws and to the feet. Of course, if you wanna make your details different, you certainly can. I'm gonna add a second line hopping over those feet and arms to make the inside of his little belly. Then let's add a tail at the bottom. So the tail, you want it to start right in between those feet and kind of curve up and around and connect back to the bottom. Otters have pretty little ears kind of on the side of their head. Let's add also the inside of the ear. And then let's give them a cute little face. Now when you do your face, you can definitely choose some different expressions for the face. Is it a sleepy otter? Is it a really happy otter? Or kind of, you pick your own. Maybe you wanna make your eyes a little bit different. Totally up to you. I'm gonna start with a little oval in the middle for the nose. Then kind of add those cute little ottery cheeks. Add a second curve for the mouth and give some really big, long whiskers for your otter. The eyes always have the most expression, uh, so you can just add little dots for eyes, but even adding some little eyebrows um, kind of adds a fun little face to your otter. You can even add some little hairs in the middle if you want to. The last thing we're gonna add is what your otter is going to be holding. So some ideas are a fish, having a fish for lunch, have them hold a little heart, a shell, a sea urchin, it is totally up to you. Maybe even another little baby otter on the belly. Um, whatever you do, have it go above the paws and then down below those little paws. So for right now, I'm just gonna draw a little heart so I'm gonna draw the top of the heart and the bottom of the heart. Now, if you drew it with pencil, your next step would be to go over it with Sharpie, but because I am done with that step, now we're gonna color. Uh, the two options I use for coloring are you can either use these temper cakes, these are the Jack Richardson temper cakes, um, or these Color the World from Crayola. Both are great because there's a lot of different options for brown. Um, so this one was colored with uh, the crayons, the Crayola crayons. This one was painted with those temper cakes so you can see it's a little bit different effect. And then the little baby otter was um, done with the crayons since it's a little bit smaller. Once your otter is finished being colored, the next step is to do the background. And I do the background on a separate sheet of paper. So I grab some turquoise, light blue, greens. You could really use any colors here. I like to use the colored papers because when we paint on it, if they leave white spots, it's still colored. So it works out that way. And then some watercolor paints. What you're gonna do with the watercolor paints is you're going to paint 
showing some movement. So instead of just filling it in, we're gonna add some little lines to kind of look like the water is swirling around your otter. So you're just gonna use those watercolor paints and kind of create some great line designs. Once your background is done, the next step is to take your otter and cut it out. And I have students cut right along the edge, right along the edge here. Carefully, carefully cut out your otter and glue it onto the background. Once it's glued onto the background, if they cut those little whiskers off, I always say that's just fine because then you can redraw the whiskers on the background and then I have students sign their name. So that finishes off the Artsy Otter Project.